Welcome to the Sesame Instructor Interface. The second part of the tutorial is going to help you understand how to run your Sesame Business Simulation courses. In this video we will cover how to upload learning materials, how to post on the forums, manage rounds, monitor course participants, review team decisions, preview results, and visit the student UI. Now that you have created your simulation course, Let's get you familiar with learning materials available on the Sesame Instructor platform. Go to Materials and you will find two sections on the left hand side. Materials and Materials Management. Under Materials, there is a short introductory video of the Sesame Instructor platform, reading materials for you and reading materials available to students. At the start of the course, you should recommend students to watch the accompanying tutorial video for the simulation and read both the decision-making guide and the case description. This is very important and will significantly increase the student's chance to do well in the simulation game. You can also upload your own learning materials to the course, like your custom debrief, video instructions, or peer-reviewed documents. What this means is, is that you will be able to use the SESIM platform as the learning management system for your entire course. To do this, first select Material Management under the Materials tab, then click Material Upload. Here you can name, describe, and specify your content type, then assign it to the course and even the round you want to use it in. You will see a breakdown of which materials are assigned to what course under the Material Matrix tab. Once uploaded, your file can be reused for as many courses in the future as needed. The forum is an excellent communication tool between you and your students. Here you may provide the briefs, updates and answer questions. The SESIM Instructor platform has three different forums. The Instructor Forum for communication between you and SESIM. The Course Forum for communication between you and the students of the entire course. And the Theme Forum for communication within themes that you as an instructor can join at will. You should direct your students to the course forum for asking general questions that can be of interest to everyone, and to the team forum for discussing simulation-specific strategies that they don't want other students to see. You will receive an email notification about a course forum posting, so you will never miss important messages from your students. In case you need to get in touch with your students urgently, you can send an email directly from the forum by creating a new post and ticking the Send Notification Email to All Course Participants checkbox. As opposed to sending emails from the course page, doing so in the forum will allow the discussion to stay interactive and centralized in one place. Although you have already defined your preliminary course schedule when creating your course, you can still change these settings even during an active course under Schedule. The readily available options are Replay Last Round and End Round. Clicking Edit in the upper right corner, however, will open up an additional set of options for you to choose from. Here, you can add more rounds to the course, remove rounds starting from the last, and set custom deadlines for non-simulation specific course tasks, like report hands-in or peer reviews. When you are ready, don't forget to click Save at the end. Now that you have your course set up, your learning materials in place, and the communication channels open, it's time to play the first round of the simulation game. But how will you know the activity level of your students? Well, one way to make sure that everyone has registered and spent sufficient amount of time in the simulation is by monitoring the logs in the course editor. The information here is an indication of each student's and a team's overall engagement level with the simulation game. In addition to monitoring student participation, the SESIM instructor also allows you to view what decisions are saved in the team decision column of each team at any given moment. You can do this under universe decisions for each universe and each round. This will allow you to see if any team has forgotten to save their decisions before the end of the round, as indicated by not having a saving time displayed on the top of the decision column. In the course page, you also have the saving information without the saving time. Those teams that have saved their decisions for the ongoing round have a green dot. The ones that didn't have a red dot. 
Another useful feature is preview results for the next round based on the currently saved decisions. By doing this, especially before the first couple of rounds have ended, you can hint your students if they are about to make a catastrophic choice. Naturally, you can also just let them learn through their mistakes. Finally, you can even visit any of your students' user interface directly by clicking on their names on the course page and by selecting Visit Student UI. This will take you to the selected student's game interface, where you can see the simulation game and the chosen student's decision set. This concludes the second video of our instructor walkthrough series. In the last video, you will learn how to analyze the results of your course. Thank you for watching.